The yeas are 50, the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the bill, as amended, is passed. <laughs> That was Vice President Kamala Harris casting the tie-breaking vote for Democrats' big reconciliation bill over the weekend. It showed just how crucial every seat is, with the Senate split dead even for only the fourth time in U.S. history. The two seats that gave Democrats that slim majority came from the 2021 special election in Georgia. Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff's victories were seen as voters' first opportunity to voice their reaction to the 2020 general election results. And ahead of the 2022 midterm elections, we find ourselves in a similar situation where control of the Senate could come down to Georgia again. Senator Warnock is defending his seat against Trump-backed Republican Herschel Walker. It's one of the most competitive races this midterm cycle. Herschel Walker, whose campaign makes headlines when it doesn't stumble, has recently been forced to acknowledge fathering children he hadn't previously acknowledged publicly. He has also faced allegations of domestic abuse, which he denies, and in a new TV spot purchased by a Republican group opposed to Donald Trump, Walker's ex-wife recalls him threatening to blow my brains out, among other acts of violence. Do you think you know Herschel Walker? Well, think again. Listen to what his ex-wife had to say about him. His eyes would become very evil. The guns and knives. I got into a few choking things with him. The first time he held the gun to my head, he held the gun to my temple and said, he was going to blow my brains out. Republican Accountability Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. In a video responding to that ad, Walker said he's glad they used his ex-wife's graphic comments and opened up about his struggle with mental health. People told me politics is dirty. They're right. My opponents launched a dirty attack ad, but I'm glad they did this ad because it gives me an opportunity to end the stigma around mental health. Here's the truth. My ex-wife Cindy and I are good friends along with her husband and my wife. And I am grateful for all the support Cindy gave me during the hardest time of my life. I came forward by then in an effort to save lives and to help people who were struggling. Joining me now is Greg Bluestein. He's a political reporter at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and also an MSNBC contributor. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. So, Greg, I mean, how do you think the back and forth of, of that ad is going to play out in Georgia? I mean, I went to undergraduate college in Georgia. I'm very familiar with the political landscape there. And the allegations by his ex-wife are very serious, but also the mental health issue he brings up. I, I do wonder if that will bring some sympathy from some potential voters. You're exactly right, and that might be one of the reasons we haven't seen Senator Warnock's campaign make this argument against Herschel Walker. This ad that we just saw was the really the first big money, the first significant ad where any group has highlighted these these claims, what what might be Herschel Walker's biggest vulnerability, which is these claims that not just about from his ex-wife, but from other women who say that he has abused them, that he has uh, threatened them physically, that he's intimidated them. He's denied all those claims. But in his response, you also saw him trying to turn that vulnerability into an advantage, saying that, hey, uh, I've got a, I have a history of mental illness and that I don't want it to be stigmatized. So he's, he's saying that these attacks are trying to uh, denigrate him for, for struggling with disassoci disassociative identity disorder over the years. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, look, this is going to be a very uh, tight race, Greg, and, and now we're seeing Senator Warnock promoting his support for a new law that expands medical benefits for veterans uh, who were exposed to toxic open-air burning. How important do you think it is for the senator to prop up his legislative achievements, particularly for swing voters, which is where I think this race is ultimately going to come down to? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. We're talking about a narrow band of swinged voters, of independent voters who haven't decided yet. And we're also talking about a significant number of Republicans who either can't hold their nose and vote for Herschel Walker or are generally impressed by Senator Warnock. We're seeing evidence of a split ticket here at the top of the ballot in Georgia with Republicans who might back Governor Brian Kemp, but are also backing Senator Warnock. And Warnock right now, his challenge and what he's trying to do is show that he's a doer, that he's an effective member of the Senate, that he's passing bipartisan legislation like that military burn pits legislation you just mentioned, also like the bipartisan infrastructure bill and other measures that he says show that he can work across party lines.
So, Greg, there's a sense at the national level right now that President Biden has really steadied the ship by stringing together some major wins uh, for his administration and the Democratic Party. But, but do you get the sense that Georgia voters are feeling those wins right now? Because some of them may take a couple months, maybe a couple quarters for people to actually begin to, to see the changes, particularly at the economic level. That is a great point. Just a few weeks ago, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution poll showed only 36 percent of likely Georgia November voters felt like Joe Biden was doing a good job, approved of his job performance so far. At the same time, Democrats are confident here that, that ship is beginning to turn. That's why you're seeing Stacey Abrams really aggressively tie herself to Joe Biden's agenda, saying that the federal climate bill, the federal health care bill will end up helping buoy Democratic spirits in November. But you're also seeing Senator Warnock maintain his independence, you know, say that he likes some of the things that Joe Biden's doing, but also talking at campaign events about uh, about bipartisan initiatives he has with Ted Cruz, of all people, of Tommy Tuberville, of very conservative Republicans. So you're seeing two dual strategies really play out with Democrats here in Georgia. But at the same time, there is this sense of optimism that, you know, that Joe Biden's kind of hit rock bottom in Georgia and he has nowhere to go but up. Yeah, I mean, I think, Greg, it's probably smart politics uh, for Senator Warnock to be careful. I mean, Georgia is still a red state. I mean, it's, it's teetering towards purple, but it's not quite there yet. So let me ask you, I mean, how big of a factor do you think, though, the former president's legal woes will play uh, in these midterms? Is, is it something that Republican voters even care about? I mean, again, Herschel Walker, Greg, was not the ideal candidate that I think many Georgia Republicans, particularly at the establishment level, would have wanted, but he is what they have now. And so do, do you think that may deter some from voting, or, or, or are you seeing that Republicans are saying, you know what? This is our guy, and we're going to stand behind him. I'll say I think Trump's legal woes terrify Democrats in a sense that they're not talking about it at all on the wow. campaign trail. It's not something they bring up. The Fulton County Special Grand Jury, of course, is still going on. It's tightening sort of its net around Trump's inner circle right now with Rudy Giuliani, Lindsey Graham, with other members of, of Trump's closest confidants being subpoenaed to testify. At the same time, though, Democrats here are very wary of injecting Trump back into this race of potentially energizing Trump supporters who might not be in love with either Herschel Walker or Governor Brian Kemp, who, of course, defied Trump's plans to overturn Georgia's election. So they don't want to give Republicans any more reason to go out and vote for their adversaries. And yet even Kemp, Greg, to, to Donald Trump's distaste, was able to pull it off. Greg Bluestein, thank you so much for joining me. 